Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex. I'm your host for another 30-minute consultation. This this one isn't so much a consultation, I think. I think it might serve as a uh, as an opinion of sorts, motivation, hopefully, and maybe maybe a consultation. I mean, if I had a young person come to me and ask me for some intelligent words, some wise words, some choice wisdom. Because, again, that comes with time. Wisdom comes with time. Very rarely can someone learn from someone else's mistakes if they don't actually experience, live that experience in order to have it be turned, have it become wisdom. As you know, this podcast is a form of uh, cathartic therapy, for me at least, as a professional, constantly seeking to improve and develop themselves socially and and personally and professionally, right? That's why uh, career consulting is, is one of those things that I've taken up as um, as a duty to everyone around me and have them improve on themselves, have them be better versions of themselves with every interaction that we have. Again, it doesn't even have to be day to day. It could be minute to minute, just better. Just be better. This one's coming from r slash no stupid questions. Funny enough, I was uh, surfing a bit on Reddit and in r slash no stupid questions, there was a a question there left by a teenager and it made me wonder if if at one point in time I held the same query in my mind. And their question is, I am a teenager today. Oh, hold on. They've missed some punctuation there, some grammar. I'm a teenager. Today was my first day working in my life. Does it get better? Does it get better? I mean, you've got to ask yourself whether or not their first day was even that bad. Okay? Now, I don't know what their educational level is, what they know about writing and reading, and whether or not we could use a little bit more context, right? As far as their age goes, as far as their uh, sex goes, as far as their experience goes, any previous experience working off the clock, maybe now they're on somebody's payroll officially as an employee, but we don't know what type of life skills they have as far as integration into the workforce. But does it get better? I want to say yes, it does. But it depends. It depends on your mentality. I got my first official job working for a very prominent burger company, a hamburger company on the West Coast. If you have traveled to the West Coast, you are probably very familiar with it. It's got a cult-like following in California. And it started in Baldwin Park. California, just a little history. So I'm not going to give you the actual name, but you can go look it up. What hamburger company started in Baldwin Park? Alexa, what hamburger company started in Baldwin Park? I mean, you're not going to hear an answer from me, but if you're on speaker, (laughs) Alexa's probably telling you right now. Or Siri, what hamburger company started in Baldwin Park? California. But before that, 
I already had experience. I came up from a working class family. And boy, did they work. I remember being younger. We had a small shop. And um, since I could remember, we were in there. Working. And there was some of the more menial tasks. Obviously, as I grew older, I began to assist clients and customers. But as I was younger, we did the more menial labor. We would wipe tables, dust furniture, clean, prepare. If there was anything to cook, we would prepare in advance. We would be doing the preparation, the washing, the labeling, the storing. <clears throat> and as we grew, we... You know, learn to handle knives, learn to handle hammers, that sort of thing. So I, I already had work experience, working experience, life, I had practical experience going into this hamburger company. Funny enough, the hamburger company told us in the interview, because it was a panel interview, it was a group interview. It was one of the first stores that opened, actually, in, uh, in Northern California. We were one of the first group to open this store in Northern California. And um, they told us that they hired on Smiles. They hired Smiles and trained us to do the rest. Now... You have no idea how happy I was that they were hiring me just for my smile. I smiled just at the idea of them hiring me for my smile. Because I, knew how, I already knew how to do everything else. I didn't tell them this. But the training, a piece of cake. Handling customers, taking orders, preparing food, cleaning, wiping tables, mopping working deep fryers, easy, a piece of cake. One of, it, I'm blessed that my first job was working at a company that held itself to such a high standard that my standards aligned with it. My standards for quality. I think it was a it was a good beginning. It was a good beginning to to the career that I'm at now. To what I do now. Does it get better? I want to say it does, but it depends on your mentality. There are folks who get stuck in a position and they start and it's hard, it's difficult, it's challenging. The training is, is incomprehensible. It's, it's hard to grasp. It's difficult to learn. But that doesn't mean that you should be discouraged. If anything, you should be encouraged. Because it's something you don't know how to do. There are plenty of things I learned at the burger company that I didn't know how to do before. Plenty of things. And other things just came naturally. I, it, it was already innate. I was already not born with it, but I, I, I entered the company with skills already. Thanks in part to my parents and how they raised me. The ethic that they instilled in me. It was just made better by working with the burger company. I mean, I'll probably disclose the name later, but if you've done the research, you already know which one I'm talking about. <clears throat> 
This person is a teenager and it's their first day at work and they're already asking, does it get better? There are so many variables that go into having a good day, but the controlling variable, the dominant variable, the variable that actually matters, that is conclusive, that is the deciding factor in you having a good day is yourself, is your mentality, your state of mind, how you go to work, and how you confront those challenges, that difficulty. It could be concepts that are hard to understand. It could be equipment that's difficult to operate. It could be people. that are hard to get along with due to their level of professionalism or their personality type. None of that should make you have a bad day at the end of the day. If anything, it should highlight what areas of your day, of your work life, you have the potential to influence and make better with every interaction, every interaction, not just tomorrow, not just the next day, every interaction throughout the day. I mean, for that, you've got to be hungry. (laughs) And I, I am hungry. I was always hungry. Wanting to know more, to learn more, to work more, to understand better in order to work less, in order to work more effectively and get more done. That is, be more productive. So it looks like I'm working more. I'm just working smarter. (laughs) That should be your end goal, your objective daily. Constantly is improvement. There have been situations where because you're new, because you're a novice, because you're young, and I've come across this a lot. I'm not so young anymore, but when I was younger and I was cutthroat, competitive, about what I wanted to achieve, if I was ever in a position to supervise, if I was ever in a leadership position, there were moments where it was people, people on my own team that were hard to work with, that didn't give me the respect I was due because I was younger, or would blatantly try to sabotage try to sabotage and just not work with me because of my youth, because they thought I was undeserving of positions that I had put the work into achieving, into obtaining. But you never want to show up miserable. You never want to show up looking defeated. Because this this glorified high school shit never ends. It never ends. But you've got to be above it. You have to be self-sustaining. And by that, I mean your mentality dictates your day. You can't let the group of people that you associate with, that you work with, that you surround yourself with, you can't let those people dictate how your day goes. It's on you. A lot of folks know me as a, as a happy-go-lucky type, as a serious type. But nobody knows me as being mean. Nobody knows me as being rude. Nobody knows me as being an asshole. 
I mean, maybe for the illogical, the irrational who want to assert some type of power on me, for those that want to, I don't know, control me or manipulate me somehow, if I can't be manipulated, oh, I'm the asshole all of a sudden, that happens. But that shit's normal. When you're dealing with psychopaths or sociopaths in the workplace, they exist. Narcissists, all that type of shit. They're on their own wavelength of fuckery. But it does get better. And it is better. Every day. You started your first day of work, and for that, you're already better. You've been exposed to new experiences, and now it's on you. I don't know. I don't know how supportive your family is, how supportive your friends are. The people you surround yourself with, whether or not they might be able to instill that ethic in you to not give up, not become discouraged. I hate the idea. I dislike. I abhor the idea that it's just your first day and you're wondering. You're you're left wondering if it will be better. If it will get better. You shouldn't leave it to chance. It shouldn't be a question. You shouldn't have to guess. You should know. You should know. You have the whole world ahead of you. You have your entire life ahead of you. However long or however short it is. Depending on how bold you are and the risks that you take. Personally or professionally. Makes no difference. But you ought to strive for it to be better. And regardless of the outcome, regardless of the result, you should be better. To feel better. And to improve the lives. To improve the processes that you come into contact with. If you, if you feel discouraged, if you feel down, you don't know what moves to make. If you feel like you're lost, you don't have a path, you can reach out to us regardless of age. Obviously, younger people need more guidance, need better orientation than what's given in public schools. Reach out to us. You can DM us. Instagram. Corporate Cowboys with a Z. There's the Patreon. You can subscribe. It's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Send us a message. Write to us. Put your thoughts on paper and we'll respond. That's P.O. Box 3372. Rancho Cordova, California, Nine five seven four one. All I ask is that you be patient with us so we can write back to you. You don't have to pay us. I mean, this is, this is my work. This is my duty as a professional. It's to create other professionals. A leader creates leaders. You want to donate by all means. I mean, there's links out there. You can find them. You don't have to. But this operation is nonprofit. It's for your benefit that we're here. It's for your benefit that corporate cowboys exist. Let me read a couple of these comments real quick. Because this, this was a, a touching question. And I know it's literally one sentence. Not punctuated correctly and... has grammatical errors in it, but still, it struck a chord with me. The first comment here says, it is unlikely you'll work the same job at the same place with the same people 
with the same lack of knowledge for the rest of your life. I don't know why they got to phrase it like that. The same lack of knowledge. I mean, maybe it's the same lack of experience if they're inexperienced. They could be really fucking smart, just not know how to apply it. You could be really book smart, but if you're not life smart, if you're not street smart, you lack, you lack the practical knowledge. You lack the practical experience to be able to apply that knowledge. The immediate frustrations, struggles, and general shittiness will fade, this commenter writes. It is largely due to, an enti- to being in an entirely new experience with new people, with new stress, and new responsibilities. I agree with this. This will ease as you get familiar with everything. It may still suck, but it'll be a familiar type of suck. It shouldn't suck, man. It shouldn't suck. (laughs) If you're working a shitty job, there are options. There are always, always options. Always. Some legal, some extra legal, right? I never said illegal. Some outside of the bounds of the law, outside of the confines of man's law. Some legal, some extra legal. So they say here, use this as your fire to do well in school. The motivation to identify and pursue a career you do want. There are many different kinds of jobs out there and they are wildly different in many ways. There are corporate jobs. Hey, the first one. Freelance jobs. Hey, your boy. Office jobs, sure, done that. Shop jobs, been there. People jobs, yup. Outside jobs, of course. And much, so much more. Best advice I ever got was to find the job which has the stress you handle best. All jobs will have times where they are stressful, but there are many kinds of stress and everyone handles it differently. Stress isn't inherently bad some people love the stress of tight deadlines some people love the stress of broken things needing to be figured out and fixed some people love the stress from needing to understand and handle others handle their stress and help others i'm sorry help others handle their stress i think with time and if you're a consummate professional you want to learn, you want to have a little bit of experience in all those areas. Some folks specialize. I've got nothing against specialization. I respects to them because they've chosen to dive, not even dive, but to dig into a niche area where they can become experts in. They become that much more valuable in that particular area. But me having had experience in all those types of jobs, working with tight deadlines, fixing broken things, and helping people handle their stress, I love every component of work. I love every aspect of it. Now, I never figured this when I was working for my first job, the burger company. But there were certain aspects of the job that helped me build skills, like handling cash, counting the safe, making deposits, taking orders, speaking to customers, customer service, making them happy, organizing processes as far as operating business and servicing business. That those those fundamentals that my parents had instilled in me developed further. 
into the basics. Into what are the basics for business management, for executive management, for professional development. So this, this person continues, this commenter continues, right now you are just starting out and it is absolutely the deepest end of the cesspool. Okay, now that got dark. It's not the deepest end of the cesspool. You're entry level forever, baby. Don't get it twisted. Don't think just because you got promoted once, you are further away from the cesspool. No, there's no fucking deep end to it. You don't, there's, don't let this motherfucker scare you. And it's upvoted to all hell and awarded hell of times. Don't, don't let it get to you. It says right now you are just starting out and it is absolutely the deepest end of the cesspool. No, no, it's not. If it was a good, fun, clean, relaxing job, it wouldn't be staffed by teenagers. That's fucking bullshit too. It, but it is also a temporary thing. It fucking isn't. It is not. It is lifelong development, regardless of what job you take. If you want a cushy job, become a cog in a wheel. Become a fucking drone. That's not, that's not difficult at all. That's not hard at all. You don't have to make any, any hard decisions any critical decisions, critical thinking goes out the window. I don't know why I got riled up, but that's not even like a full paragraph. And, and it's just wrong. It just sticks out like a sore thumb. The commenter here says, gives a little anecdotal, a little anecdote said, I had a friend in college who started off as a partier. What? Skipping classes and screwing around. Oh, a partier. I get it. Failed enough classes that they kicked him out for a semester. He was on academic probation. He spent that semester and the summer working the only job he could find. Commercial roofing. Spreading tar on roofs in the middle of a Virginian summer. That's got to be a bitch. I've done a little bit of that work. and But it wasn't summer. It was winter. So it was cold as fuck. And we need to blow torches. <laughs> <laughs> we needed torches. So different setting, similar work. It's difficult though. It is that is hard work. And then it says he was a straight A student from the moment he came back. Said it was the worst time of his entire life, and he was never going to go back to that job. He limited his parties to Friday nights, he attended his classes, he pursued internships. And got a good job after graduating with honors. It isn't always possible to take the traditional routes to success. But no path involves accepting things as they are and becoming complacent. Good luck. Be realistic with your goals. Don't let the current problems stop you from working on future solutions. I want to say, aww... Because what that friend what that friend makes light of is something that our original poster, our OP, hasn't done yet, which is fuck their life up, right? Which is take fucking five steps back, kick themselves down, and go out and party every night, really fuck their future up for a minute. The reason I'm I'm speaking this way is because I've done it to an extent, right? I was never really a partier, but I was off track, so to speak. I was with bad company, so to speak, right? So you could classify that as a waste of time, but I came away from it with plenty life experiences. What our OP needs to focus on is improving themselves, their mentality, and forging it. Don't let your first day on the job break you. Unless they are utterly incompetent, unless it's ran by, by complete morons, people who are Overly avarice, 
right? Ambitious to the point of hurting those around them. If they are keeping you from developing professionally, if you don't feel like you're learning anymore, right? The, the, the commenter had a point where because it's a new job, you'll be learning new things in a new environment, learning uh, alongside new people that you've never worked with before. That's a specific type of stress. It's a stress you should be able to learn with. But if it's the kind of stress that's grinding away at your professionalism, making you do things that you otherwise wouldn't, compromise your values, compromise your morals, then arguably that job just isn't for yourself. That, that job isn't for you. And it gets better when you decide to change it. So, still, coming back full circle, it depends on you. How you work. How you see yourself becoming better. How you choose to better yourself. Don't let up. This is the very start to your participation in the corporate war. <laughs> because business is war. And it's fun until it's not. But it always gets better. I mean, it gets worse before it gets worse. And it gets better before it gets better. You just you just have to see it that way. It's your mentality. Have a good one. I'll catch you next time.